Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to our 2024 CISSP detailed content outline deep dive with uh, Larry Greenblatt. Hi, Larry. Hi, I'm Peter. Uh, yeah, I'm fresh off the new exam. I'm so psyched about our brand new uh, 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 programs that you helped create. Oh, so many of them, very grateful. And let me start by saying, in my opinion, the exam was refreshingly up to date and quite relevant. I've been teaching CIS at people boot camps you know, since 2001. And there's a common theme among some folks that say stuff like, uh, oh, the CISSP is this old, outdated stuff, or you just got to answer what the ISC squared thinks is correct. You know, forget the real world. Well, I'm very happy to report that was not my experience this April 16th. All right, Larry, let's jump right in. Domain one is security and risk management. Well, you know, the first step is to make sure you're going in the right direction. And one of the most important directions is to be ethical. You know, that's the compliance part about it. So as we continue to integrate, especially with AI in our lives, we're very worried about bias. And it's the number one risk we have to address in AI. So the IAC Square actually has this in their code of ethics. The most uh, fundamentally uh, uh, part about it, the primary uh, code of ethic, is that we protect the common good. And we're very aligned with the ISO. Uh, so the common good is is not a particular company or country like all AIs. Now, remember, the IAC Square is aligned with the ISO. And a lot of people think the ISO is an acronym, but actually it comes from a Greek word. It means equal. And they're currently uh, 171. I noticed this week they added another one. So from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe. And uh, you know, like I said, it's the uh, it's a lot of governance and risk we're going to cover, but also compliance. And the, and the most important thing about compliance is that you made an agreement with somebody. You're going to agree that when you, you steered your ship to the place, you got there and maybe you're in line. You got to wait in line. It's not just you in the world. It's the golden rule. So 1.2 is understand and apply security concepts. Yeah, the most basic things, the primary goals, uh, we always protect confidentiality, and that's, that's like privacy or secrecy. In our class, we'll go into the big difference between those things. Integrity, make sure that whatever wasn't damaged in shipping. And availability, whatever your resource is, the most important thing is that you can use it. It is a resource. Now, uh, in the, the most recent version, they also added authenticity and non-repudiation. I attribute these to our, our blockchain people who make sure that they they understand that we're, and we'll cover this, but integrity, we generally think of with a hash and information authenticity with, with a, a private and public key infrastructure. So 1.3 talks about evaluate, apply, and sustain security governance principles. So what is your take on that, Larry? Well, we, we have to understand that there are uh, governance against means to steer and there are best practices, just like when you learn to drive. Um, internationally, the ISO I mentioned earlier has the best known certification for that. There are also a number of best practices from NIST, COBIT, SABS, and uh, FedRAMP is actually a specific framework for uh, the U.S. government in getting uh, cloud service providers up to date. But I like to tell my students, think of 20 uh, ISO uh, standards, the ISO certification that we're going to cover, 27001. It's kind of like the CISSP for an organization. Okay. Continuing um, with the evaluate, apply, and sustain security governance principles, we have due care and due diligence. And I know you like to say it the other way around. That's exactly right. I like to say you should think before you act, but you do it to take action. And I could see where maybe it's a wheel, it's a chicken egg thing. I took an action and then I realized I should have thought about it and then I learned better. But yes, due diligence is to say in our, our context, we do a risk assessment and we think before we act. And then once we figured out what we, what could go wrong and what we should do about it, then when when it does happen, we actually do it. So, yeah. And I like to say, I, I saw an ad for a guy who is choking at the dinner table and another guy's going, oh, you know what Bob needs? He needs the Heimlich maneuver. I learned about it in school. And he did his due diligence, but he never did any due care. Another guy then performs it. That's the difference. That was a really cool analogy you had with the Heimlich maneuver. I'll remember that. Well, it was Royal Bank of Scotland was the commercial. Okay. 
One of four is understand legal, regulatory, and compliance issues that pertain to information security in a holistic context. Yeah, as CISPs should be familiar with various types of cyber crimes and data breaches, and these includes understanding the different motives you know, behind these malicious activities. Could be financial gain; they want your money, but sometimes it's hacktivism or whatever. And, and you got to be aware of the common tactics, you know, whether it's phishing, malware, social engineering. Yeah, 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 yeah. You should know the consequences too, especially whether it's financial, reputational, or even you know regulatory legal issues. So. We have to be able to understand the best practices for preventing, and then you can't prevent everything. You got to be able to detect and respond appropriately. Now, on transporter data flow, very old uh, concept on the exam, and I saw it reflected as well still, and it's very important. Uh, the Organization of Economic Cooperative Development, OECD, <clears throat> has established guidelines for the protection of privacy and transporter data flows, and these guidelines, they were created in like 1980, but they were updated in 2013, and they're respected in a lot of like World Trade Organization type kind of thing. So CHP should be pretty familiar with that. 1.4, understand legal regulatory compliance issues. Continuing with that, Larry, let's jump into that. And I yes. know Especially there, there and, and on my exam, I noticed, uh, and, and I've been for a while, particularly GDPR, but there's a lot of these things we've got uh, from, from China, from South Africa, uh, California. We're going to see they continue to grow. And I highly recommend people look at the uh, NIST 853 on understanding, protecting uh, people's information. And that uh, from GDPR, you have the, the right to be notified, the right to uh, consent, the right to opt out, the, to understand the purpose. You know, I need to request a review. And then when I leave, and one of the most challenging is the right to be forgotten. So. 105 um, talks about understand requirements for investigation types, the administrative, civil, criminal, regulatory, and industry standards. Let's dive a little bit into that. Yeah, well, the CHP has to be prepared for uh, responding to all kinds of things, including man-made intentional things. So you got to be familiar with investigations, administrative, whether criminal, civil, regulatory, and industry-specific inquiries. The CHP needs to understand the, the unique requirements and processes associated with each type of investigation to effectively support and collaborate with the relevant authorities and stakeholders. 1.6 is develop, document, and implement security policy, standards, procedures, and guidelines. Yes, yes, yes. And, and it's, it drives everything. The policies tell us, you know, I like to say, starts with who, but what needs to be done, where, when, and why, all the W's. And that's going to include an overall baseline of what's accepted or expected at the, the, uh, at the, uh, at the hot top level. Now we have to figure out how. So if we have to encrypt, if that's what we have to do, we have to pick a standard. We have to set the proper key lengths. We have to then give people instructions on how to do that and some optional guidelines. Now, CISSPs play a crucial role in developing, documenting, and implementing an organization's security policies, standards, procedures, and guidelines. CISSPs should possess the skills to create clear, concise, and actionable documents that align with the organization's risk management strategy and ensure consistent application of security controls across the enterprise. So one of the most critical topics here, 1.7 is identify, analyze, assess, prioritize, and implement business continuity requirements. I know this is your favorite topic. Well, you know, like I said, I've been teaching this since 2001, and it's like the most overlooked thing. It's usually the part that people get clobbered on if they're not prepared. We do our best to prevent as much risk as possible. We accept some minimized level, and then we need to detect and respond. Should that ever happen? What if there really is a fire? You know, so a CISSP should be well-versed in conducting business impact analysis, BIA, to identify and prioritize critical business functions and assets. The BIA helps determine the potential consequences of disruptions and establishes the foundation for developing effective business continuity and disaster recovery plans. 
CISSPs must recognize the importance of assessing and managing external dependencies that can impact an organization's uh, business continuity. But if you're whatever, there's no electricity, there's no water. They should be skilled in identifying critical third party suppliers, service providers, and partners, and ensuring appropriate measures are in place to mitigate risks and maintain continuity of operations in the event of some disruption. 1.8 talks about contribute to and enforce personnel security policies and procedures. People are our most important assets and the source of our largest set of threat actors, whether accidentally or intentionally. And our relationships are dynamic and a huge hole in security over the years has been inefficient access deprovisioning. CISSPs must be knowledgeable in contributing to and enforcing personnel security policies and procedures. This includes understanding uh, the importance of thorough candidate screening and hiring processes, ensuring that employment agreements are policy driven uh, and requirements are in place, managing onboarding, transfers and termination processes effectively, and establishing appropriate agreements and controls for vendors, consultants, and contractors. By addressing these aspects of personnel security, CISSPs help minimize insider threats and protect the organization's assets. 1.9 is to understand and apply risk management concepts. Well, you know, we're in the governance section and govern means to steer. It comes from the Greek. Uh, risk comes from the Greek. That means the cliffs underwater. And so today we think of uh, unforeseen danger and we prepare by doing our due diligence and due care. So uh, we're going to get a lot of questions on risk assessment. And that means, uh, again, you're going to think before you act. So we identify what could go wrong. We analyze the impact and likelihood, and we evaluate ways to deal with it. Remember, risk treatment is to take action. That's our due care. 1.9 is to understand and apply risk management concepts. We just continue to the other bullet points in this section, Larry. Yeah, well, again, after we identified and analyzed our risk, we have to come up with ways to respond or to treat it. So the third step of risk assessment is to, uh, it's like doing a cost-benefit analysis of the likely impact of doing some risky action and determine if something we should avoid, reduce, transfer, or accept. Uh, now, remember, controls also add new risks. And so CISSP should be well-versed in risk response and treatment strategies, including the use of cybersecurity insurance and other risk mitigation techniques. They must understand the applicable types of controls, preventive, detective, and corrective measures, and be able to select and implement them effectively. Additionally, CISSP should be skilled in conducting control assessments and evaluate the effectiveness of the security program. CISSPs must be proficient in establishing and maintaining continuous monitoring and measurement processes to track the effectiveness of security controls and identify potential vulnerabilities. They should be skilled in creating meaningful reports for both internal and external stakeholders, communicating the organization's security posture and compliance status. Furthermore, CISSP should be committed to continuous improvement by leveraging risk maturity models and other techniques to enhance the organization's security program over time. We never get it right, but we get better. Finally, they must act and, and, and be familiar with uh, actions that are associated with various frameworks. So we mentioned ISO and NIST and COBIT and SAPSA. And of course, uh, PCI is a little uh, strange here, but it's 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 uh, if you deal with a, cr a credit card, you have to follow best practices there. All right. So understand how to apply these things and manage the information security risks. We move on to 1.10. Uh, understand and apply threat modeling concepts and methodologies. Such a hot topic on LinkedIn, too. Looking for people who could do threat modeling. Yeah, CISSPs should have a solid understanding of threat modeling concepts and methodologies. They must be able to address and uh, identify potential threats, assess their likelihood and impact, and develop appropriate mitigation strategies. By applying threat modeling techniques, CISSPs can proactively identify and address security weaknesses, ensuring that the organization's defenses are robust and effective against a wide range of potential attacks, or at least we hope. 
1.11 is apply supply chain risk management concepts. Yeah, uh, it's one of the bigger holes. We see it all the time. And, you know, I could think of like whether it's water or electricity, but DLLs and stuff and APIs are going out of control. And I saw something about we think there's going to be something like in the next couple of years, 500 billion AI agents. So CISPs must be knowledgeable about the risks associated with the acquisition of products and services from suppliers and providers. These risks can include product tampering, counterfeiting, and the presence of malicious implants. To mitigate these risks, CISPs should be familiar with strategies such as third-party assessments, monitoring, establishing minimum security requirements, and implementing security technologies like Silicon Roots of Trust, you know, I'm a big Fido fan and my TPM uh, and uh, physically unclonable functions, right? That's what we've got right there. And uh, understanding the software bill of materials. 1012 is establish and maintain a security awareness, education and training program. Yes, yes, yes. CISSP should be skilled in establishing and maintaining an effective security awareness, education, and training programs. They must be familiar with various methods and techniques to increase awareness and engagement, such as leveraging social engineering. A lot of people use the no before phishing campaigns. My wife's really big in that. So, uh, right. Um, uh, some simulation, appointing security champions, and gamification. Uh, CISSP should also ensure that the program program content is regularly reviewed and updated to address emerging technologies and trends such as cryptocurrency issues, AI, blockchain, and finally, they must be able to evaluate the effectiveness of the awareness program using appropriate metrics and feedback mechanisms, making continuous improvements to optimize its impact on the organization's security culture. That's what we do. Well, that completes domain one. And remember, if you're studying for your exam, make sure you feel comfortable with these uh, these uh, uh, subjects and these subtasks. And if you need help, well, we have programs that can do that for you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Larry, you cover this expertly in your five-day boot camp, your eight-week boot camp that we're starting soon. So details to follow. Uh, we have a number of other ways you can practice with us. Um, you can book a session for a private one-on-one -on -one review with Larry and I. Um, and you can also do one of our pre-recorded boot camps um, for the latest 2024 CISSP exam. So we wish you all the best in your prep and good luck. And you know where to find us. And join us next week when we'll be covering Domain 2. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you.